The Citizens' Assembly on Biodiversity reported at the beginning of last month, having convened in May 2022 in line with a programme for government commitment. Over the course of seven months and under the direction of their chair, Dr. Evie Nihulawan, the 99 citizens heard, weighed and considered the advice of experts, both in terms of where we are and, more importantly, where we need to go. And after that careful deliberation, they delivered 159 clear recommendations and in their first recommendation, an unequivocal message that the state must take prompt, decisive and urgent action to address biodiversity loss and restoration and must provide leadership in protecting Ireland's biodiversity for future generations. The Children and Young People's Assembly on Biodiversity Loss were equally clear in their views, asking us, as the legislators of today, to put biodiversity and the rights of nature at the heart of the decisions that we make. This is particularly striking when we consider that it is today's children who will live with the consequences of those decisions we take. I'm sure that those 99 citizens and those 35 young people who gave of their time to produce these outstanding reports are watching on carefully to see whether we will provide the leadership that they've asked for. Indeed, I will be watching carefully during next week's debate on the EU nature restoration law to see which parties across this house will live up to these challenges. I'm sure we all learned at school that old song, all God's creatures have a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, but now more and more of those creatures are singing more and more quietly, their voices tailing off into oblivion. The Bramble Cay Melimus, the Chinese River Dolphin, the Western Black Rhinoceros, these voices have been stilled forever, thousands and millions of years of evolution snuffed out in an eye blink. Future generations can no more know them than I can know the dodo. And here at home, the calls of the corncrake, the curlew, the nightjar, song lines that have animated our landscapes for generations, are heard calling now in ever decreasing numbers. How long can the choir keep singing? How far can we push the natural world before the music stops? There's a grim irony that two words Ecology and economy, they share their etymology in the Greek word oikos, meaning the foundational social unit, or more simply understood as home. But whereas ecology is the study of our common shared home, the definition of economy has become twisted, especially when viewed through the dominant economic hegemon of our time, that of neoliberal capitalism. Kim Stanley Robinson, in his recent novel, The Ministry of the Future, defines ideology as one's imaginary relationship to the real situation. This current economic orthodoxy seems determined to remain blind to the real situation, that infinite growth cannot be possible in a finite system, that economy must be a subset of ecology, not the other way around. There are better ways for us to live together in our shared home. The, sustain uh, the sustainable development goals are one such lens that we can apply to our worldview through which we can ensure a better future for generations to come. We often consider the SDGs as something that applies to the developing world, far away from us, distant from here. But looking at the sub-targets of Goal 15, for example, life on land, the goal which commits us to protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, halt and reverse land degrad degradation, and halt biodiversity loss. For example, ex sub-target 15.1, by 2020, to ensure the conservation, restoration, and sustainable use of terrestrial and inland freshwater ecosystems and their services, in particular forests, wetlands, mountains, and drylands, in line with obligations under international agreements. Or 15.5, to take urgent and significant action to reduce the degradation of natural habitats, halt the loss of biodiversity, and by 2020, protect and prevent the extinction of threatened species or indeed under goal 14, which is life below water, target 14.4. By 2020, sustainably manage and protect marine and coastal ecosystems to avoid significant adverse impacts, including by strengthening their resilience and take action for their restoration in order to achieve healthy and productive oceans. How are we measuring up on these commitments? When we go to the UN in July to present our voluntary national report, how will we be able to stand over our record? Ken Corla, the hour is late, but the day is not lost. The work of the Citizens' Assembly gives us a clear roadmap, should we have the courage here to follow it. 
Future skies, future rivers, future seas will be quieter, emptier places unless we act now with urgency. I want my children and my grandchildren to know the salmon falls, the mackerel crowded seas of Yates, as I did growing up. If we act now with bravery, that can still be so. Fair amount.